everyone. My name is Hawa. Uh, I run a company called Foundations by Hawa. I'm based in Blackburn and I've been here, well, specifically within this studio for the last four years. Um, but I've been a makeup artist for 19 now. So um, it's my passion. It's what I do and I love doing it. Uh, I predominantly teach in hair, makeup and scarf styling. Uh, that's been my main uh, sort of aim for the last four years at least. I still do hair and makeup for weddings and events and parties and things like that as well. Uh, obviously this year has been a bit different because we've had um, lots of things to contend with but we're getting there. Um, so I'm teaching you via Zoom. I generally always teach one-to-one uh, -one on a class basis so hopefully when the world goes back to normal we can do that too one day. Um, I'm just going to introduce you to uh, my model Anissa. Anissa is from America. <laughs> I just love the accent. So yeah, um, Anissa is going to be the model for the day. I'm going to demonstrate how to do um, uh, a lovely party look for us. So uh, a really quick party look that we can do on ourselves for any parties that we might be attending at Christmas time or any weddings or anything that's coming up or maybe you just want to make mm. an effort uh, and, and sit at home on the couch which is what I've done for, for many months now. So let's see how we get on. Um, I, I do intend to have a question and answer session at the end um, for any questions that you might have but it might be that we because we've started a bit later we might struggle for time so if you want to ask me anything or want me to repeat anything that I've said um, just 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 pip in and, and just ask me um, and, I, and I'll answer the questions as best as I can um, if there's anything that uh, I've covered and I've done it too fast or I've said it too fast then do slow me down because I have a bit of talking too fast we've just got lots to say that's why um so yeah and i and i love interaction so don't feel as if you all have to sit in silence and watch me um uh, if you've been here in the class in the studio then we'd have had lots of interactions so do um speak as as, as much as you want to and interact with each other as well because it'll just make it a more fun class to be and anise has always got lots to say anyway because she's american and she they, they tend to have lots to talk about uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so she's going to talk anyway okay so I'm going to start with uh, um, talking about the skin. So when you're when you're doing your makeup, um, if if your skin isn't um, in the best uh, state, it's very likely that your makeup's not going to look the best. So, as with the canvas and painting, if the canvas is um, blotchy or it's it's not right, then it's very likely that the painting is not going to look right too. So. If you imagine your skin as that canvas and think about priming that first before you do any any sort of work on top of it. Um, generally, I think um, a lot of us do moisturise our skin, but we don't look after it in the sense uh, that we're um, probably not drinking enough water or we're not using enough skin care, especially in the winter when it starts getting quite cold. We do need to keep our skin moisturised to make sure that it's hydrated and it gives you more of a radiant finish when, you, when you've done your makeup. Um, so that's just a general tip for everyone. Um, so always, always think about uh, the skin before you think about uh, doing makeup. And I'm going to start by uh, moisturising and eating skin. So I'm just going to use... on her skin to make sure um, that her skin's nicely hydrated so it will just mean that her foundation will go on better. Um, it's very uh, it's 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 much better for your foundation in the sense that your skin won't soak it in. So if your skin's dehydrated and it's not had a drink of anything it will soak in your foundation so it's very important to make sure that you've got lots of hydration on your face. Just going to pop that all over. I mean, I'm using a brush because I'm working on a client, um, but with your cells, obviously, you can use your fingers, form the product on, on your hands and then pop it straight on. Don't forget to do the eyes as well.
Okay, so that's the moisturizer on her face now. I'm then going to add a primer. Now, primer acts like um, a cement almost. So it's almost like a cement uh, to make sure your makeup stays on your face. So moisturizer is used to hydrate your face to make sure your skin's at its best um, um, condition so that your makeup looks better. And then your primer is your product that's going to help your makeup stay on your face. So generally it's a silicone based product um, and what it does is it helps your makeup to adhere to your face and it will stay on better. So I'd probably say it's a step that we shouldn't really skip um, if we can help it. Now I'm using a brand um, called MAC and this is the Prep and Prime, uh, Prep and Prime Primer um, and all we need is a tiny amount and that's just going to get brushed onto the face on top of that moisturiser. So sorry, have I, what, what, sorry, go sorry. On. Have I, what brand is that? It's MAC. MAC. So most foundations that uh, you will probably use will have a, a sort of compatible primer with it. So I generally say that if we are using a MAC based foundation, then uh, use the MAC based primer with it. If you're using NARS, for example, use NARS instead, or any brand really. So even um, the uh, drugstore brands will have primers that they um, formulate to sit well with the foundation. Okay, so that's all on now. So the next step will be to do the base. Um, so this is your foundation going on now. Um, there's a few brands that I would probably say um, stand out for me in terms of how they how they sit on your skin and um, how they sit on your skin and how they wear through the day. So um, some of the brands that I use are MAC uh, Studio Fix Foundation and then the NARS All Day Luminous Foundation. Now a foundation like this, for example, will give you like 15 hours of wear. So if you're planning to go into a party or you're going somewhere where there's going to be lots of sort of bright lights and things like that, this would be quite a good one to use because they'll give you longer to your wear. There's one thing putting your makeup on right at home, but you do want it to look good throughout the day. So this is, a, this is definitely a product I'd recommend uh, to give you that really nice flawless uh, skin base. Now I use a, uh, a sponge to put foundation on with. You can also apply it with a, a foundation brush if you wish. Um, but the sponge will just give you more even sort of coverage on the skin. I'm just sort of dabbing it onto the skin and sort of just pressing it in and covering everything I can see. We're just missing out the area around the eyes because we will be covering that with concealer in a short while. And I do drag the uh, foundation down onto the neck as well so that there's no disparity in the colour. Do you want it to look even all the way through? It's very easy to think that foundation just goes on the face and you'd stop at the jawline. But just having it run slightly lower down into your neck uh, will just help it to look a little bit more natural. And see how fast it goes on with the sponge as well. Rather than doing it with a brush and then trying to brush it into all the crevices, with a sponge you can really just get into all the little corners, like things around the nose and around the lips. It's quite easy to miss them out, but with a sponge it really does give you the coverage that you need. And you can work it in, so if you, for example, have, I mean, Anissa has got beautiful skin, so we don't really need to worry about anything. <laughs> so we don't need to really worry about any sort of marks or pigmentation marks or acne scars or anything like that. Um, and she has a very even skin tone, so I don't have to really work hard with trying to cover any marks or anything. Um, so she's quite lucky in that sense, but if we are worried about, like I have, I have acne scars and things, so when I'm doing my foundation, um, I have to sort of work harder in certain areas. So if you do have any marks or any sort of pigmentation marks, you can just use a sponge and cover over those areas again. So it's like a buildable coverage um, and just go over those areas again just to give it a little bit more of um, the, the sort of covered look and you will get rid of a lot of the um, sort of irregularities in your skin tone just with the foundation 
Now, often when I'm doing a makeup class, I get asked why I've not done the, uh, the concealer first. Um, the concealer acts as um, sort of a product that covers imperfections. If you've covered it with your foundation and you've managed to get rid of whatever you think is an imperfection, then you don't need as much concealer to go over the top. So really, with Anissa, she doesn't need concealer anywhere else apart from underneath her eyes and on top of. So realistically, it means that you're going to use less products. It just makes more sense to do the foundation first and then do the concealer after. Now, I tend to always use a little bit of foundation on the eyelids itself, just because it starts giving you a little bit of coverage on your eyes. So when you are doing your eye makeup, it's uh, taken away that natural colour for you, so you, your eyeshadow will fit better. How's it looking on camera? It's looking good. Yeah. Can you yeah. can you see the colour in things, or is it too bright? You you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to stop with that now. Next. Um, dark circles is, is a concern that a lot of people have about, about their skin. Um, I definitely uh, worry about my circles more than anyone else. I think we sometimes we just don't get enough sleep or the children have kept us up at night or mm. there's a lot of caffeine in your diet. So there's lots of things that contribute to dark circles. I think having Asian skin generally does contribute to dark circles sort of hereditary wise. So, it, you know, we're already on, on sort of a back foot with that. Um, but as we age as well, you know, you can get sort of darker circles underneath your eyes. So that's mm. one of the main concerns I seem to, seem to see with a lot of the ladies I've trained. Um, mm. And it's quite a tricky one to cover because it's not one recipe for all. It's not as easy as just covering it up. It's about finding out what colour, uh, you know, what cause the skin is underneath the eyes, correcting that first and then concealing over the top. So it's a little bit more technical than just, for example, covering the face with the base. Um, so I'm going to show you how I do that with Anissa. Um, if your under eyes are quite significant, significantly different in colour to the rest of your skin, um, then you'd have to sort of think about correcting it first. So before you even think about putting your concealer on to cover, to cover the skin, you're thinking about correcting the colour underneath the skin. Generally, if you have yellow toned skin, um, it will look like a sort of a bluey or a purpley tone underneath your eyes. And if you have a pinkier skin tone, then it will look sort of quite... Um, bluey purpley sort of shadow underneath your eyes mm -hmm. so we're looking at trying to correct that first before we try and conceal the area so I'll do that now I'll show you how I'm using a product called an orange corrector. Does anybody know how to use that or does anybody use it already? Mm. No. Okay. So this product is called, um, it's LA Girl Pro Conceal. That's the name of the brand. Um, and the colour I'm using is orange. Is on the which means the next door neighbor to the left owns the left. Just into the contours of the under eye. Where can you get that from, Hello. Um, So it's generally not available um, in any stores because it's. It, I think it's an American brand, so um, it will be available on Amazon, um, Beauty Bay, or Cult Beauty. So these are like the beauty uh, makeup websites. Um, and it's to be fair, it's only about between three and five pounds. So it's a very, very inexpensive product, but it does an amazing job. And I'm comparing this to some of the high end ones that I've used, um, which cost a lot more than this, but this one does an amazing uh, job. It's, it's literally I have like, heard of, I've heard of somebody using it, but absolutely, it changes yeah. the whole whole thing about covering your under eyes. So this does majority of the work for you. So you can get rid of that purpley blue shadow on your eyes. What's it called? Sorry, can you just give me the name? So of the it's called LA Girl. LA, LA Girl. Pro right. Conceal. LA Girl, sorry, what? Pro Conceal. Pro Conceal, okay. And the colour is orange. 
Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah. thank you. So I've just dabbed a few little brush strokes underneath her eyes, um, and then I'm getting um, a sort of a, a flat concealer brush just to press that colour into that crevice. You do want it to be quite visible. So if you're looking at your eyes and you've got this great big orange uh, streak underneath your eyes, you've done it right. If you blend it in and you can't see the orange anymore, then you've blended it in too much. So you do need to be able to see uh, quite a sort of a dramatic orange sort of shade underneath your eyes. And I promise you it'll look better when it's finished. Okay, your eyes up for me. Close. Now, when you've put that product on, you just want to give it between three and five minutes for it to set into, into the skin. The reason we do that is if I was to apply a product on top of this now, because it's wet, they'll just blend together and end up with like a muddy mess underneath your eyes. So that's why people are quite scared about using orange corrector. It's one of those things that if it's not done right, it can, it can look quite terribly off. So um, we wait for a few minutes for it to set and then we'll use a concealer over the top of it. So then that way it'll sort of give it a really nice sort of clean, seamless finish and really nice. Has anybody struggle with under eye uh, correction? Anybody found that that's quite a struggle for them when they're doing the makeup? Yeah. Or, yeah. I've got a bad day for dark circles. <laughs> Yeah, it seems to be a main concern for a lot of people. It seems to be something that people struggle to tackle as well, simply because it's just so it's so varied from person to person. So unless you have a trained makeup makeup artist telling you what works and what will work for your skin, I think it'd be quite hard to just sort of match uh, just sort of by looking at a product, for example. There's a lot of trial and error, isn't it? I think a lot of the times we do end up going to these makeup counters and buying things we don't need or it's the wrong colour yeah. um, because you've been sort of coaxed into buying it. And then you bring it home and you think, oh my goodness, that's just such a wrong colour for me. Yeah. Um, and I've done it before I was trained. I, I'd, I'd buy lots yeah. of things because I'd go in for a mascara and they'd sold me the whole face. Like literally yeah. everything. Um, and it was all wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, I've that too, so. Yeah, I, I'm sure lots of people do some that. <laughs> right, so we've given it a few minutes for it to settle in. I'm now going to conceal underneath the eyes. Um, I'm using a product called the Tarte Concealer. Is anybody familiar with that brand? No, nobody's used it before. It, it's a really, really good one for um, covering circles so that it's, it's, it's got um, long wear, so it'll stay on all day. It doesn't move much and it doesn't crease, so that's why I like this one. Sorry, what's it called, Hello. It's called Tarte, so it's spelled T-A-R-T-E. T A R T E concealer. Yeah. Where, can, where, when is that? Where is that available from? So that'll be available online as well. So this is oh. this is a, is again an American brand. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah, it's an American brand, so we can't get. Basically, it all the good makeup is American. <laughs> <laughs> you it's not have. really. All the good makeup artists are British, though. No, they're not. Yes, they no, they're not. Yes, they uh, <laughs> hello, have you not heard of what's his name? Why am I forgetting his name? Mario. Makeup by Mario, Kim Kardashian's like go-to makeup artist. But he is. But their oh skin God. tone, their skin tone is different to Asian skin tone. Yeah, we've kind of been on the short end of the stick with that one. I mean, <laughs> us Asians, we really haven't been blessed with good skin. No, Gotta be real. No, we have. We have got good skin. No. It's up to us to maintain the skin. That's true as well. That's true. If you're, if I'm very low maintenance, so like for me, it's just like washing my face and then just like moisturizing. So that's about as far well, as I've I go. Been trying to train this guy She's been trying to train me skin. for like six and years. She came to this country. Nothing. <laughs> I've gained nothing. I've I've come to her class about like three, four times, and it's all over my head. <laughs> I just leave her to it. If I need something done, I just go to Hubba. That's just what it, it'll it's do. Brilliant. It's easier, isn't it? <laughs> when Anissa came to. Uh, to England, bless oh, her. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know why I would send her here, but when she, I met Anissa. I'm an asset to your country. I mean, I am like the best thing that's happened to the UK in like five years. 
Pop rock age, wasn't it? When she came, when she came here and met her on her wedding day, they booked me. Her family had booked me as a makeup artist for her bridal. And I can honestly say in all the years that I've ever done a makeup, I've never had such an entertaining appointment because she was absolutely hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. And um, she'd had a bit of an audience getting here. And, and, oh, and, and uh, <laughs> when she did, it was just, um, yeah, it, it was quite an entertaining appointment. Everything that could go wrong during wedding week went wrong times 100. I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> but we got through. And Hawa made me look like a very beautiful bride. So, and how long have you been married now? Six years. Goodness me, has it been, that been long? six years? Yes. Six That's the main years. thing. Yeah. That's Sorry. The thing, getting married. Yes. I've got I've done a lot of concealers because oh, yeah. we just need a fair amount to give it that really nice clean. So are you using quite a lot of concealer there? Uh -huh. I have, yeah. If you can tell, I have I've done quite a lot because the sponge yeah. does take up a little bit of it anyway. And also, I just want a really nice clean look because I really want to give you uh, a really nice seamless look for when we're doing the eyeshadow. So I have applied quite a lot of concealer. Yeah. And yeah. to be fair, concealer is one of those products that you do need a fair bit of. Um, because it just really sort of cleans up the eye area and it needs the most work. So I would say I've applied as much concealer under her eyes as I have over her whole face. So just want to dab all that in and just blend it a little bit lower as well. So although the under eye circle only finishes sort of there, I have dragged the colour down a little bit further just because we don't want to give an illusion of having sort of white sort of circles underneath the eyes. Power. Yes. If you're buying these things online, so let's yeah. say like the concealer, what would you do about the shade? How do you know which shade to get for yourself? Oh, so yeah, it's a little bit difficult with the, with the um, tart shades because there is nowhere where they stock it in the UK, so it's really quite difficult to match up. Um, you know, if you did want to buy online, um, I would probably say that the only um, shades really that are suitable for a yellow tone skin. Um, would be the shade medium sand and then light medium sand. So if you're sort of quite um, a fair to medium complexion, I'd probably say go for the light medium sand. And if you're sort of like a me average sort of um, medium co complexion, I'd probably say go for the medium sand. Uh, that's okay, and that's for, the, that's for the tart concealer, yeah? That's for the tart concealer, okay. yeah. I mean, I am sort of, when I was trained to do makeup artistry, I, I trained with the, uh, with Mac. So my sort of understanding about colors and shades and things comes from, from Mac. So I could easily match people to Mac just from looking at a skin. Um, but it'd be quite difficult for me to do that for a brand like uh, Tarte, which is a quite a new brand as well. Um, but I'm, I, I'd be able to easily do that with, the, with Mac or NARS maybe. That's actually my party trick. So when I do my master classes and I have sort of 15 girls sat in a row, I'd say, I'd sort of just shout numbers out and say, you're this colour, you're this colour, you're this colour, you're this colour. <laughs> and to be honest, 99% of the times I'm usually right. Okay, so I'm just going to get because the sponge really won't reach and that's what I'm just going to go in there with just to make sure I've got right into these corners because uh, I don't want to poker in the eye with my sponge. Already you can see how the skin looks so much more, um, you know, this, the shade of the skin is, is so much more uniform with the rest of her face now. So that's a concealer still in the court. What that's you still concealer, yes, it's still concealer. I'm just using a brush to do it so that I can... Uh... There we go. Okay, so now we've got a blank canvas. She looks very, very pale and there's no colour on her face. So we're going to... Um, we'll do the eyebrows first and then we'll move on to um, the eye makeup. I've not done my eyebrows in a year. It's all right, we're in COVID, we're not going anywhere anyway. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. So I'm using a product called Anastasia Beverly Hills. And also American. <laughs> become an American and British debate. Oh, no. I'm, doing that. I'm, just, I'm just stating the obvious. Next also we'll American. Get, <laughs> next week we'll get some different blackness. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we've got Dip Brow Pomade. This is um, uh, in the shade Dark Brown. And basically, it's just like a gel, sort of like a gel-like product, I don't know if you can see that on camera. Um, and I'm using a small brush uh, to, to sort of give her a definition around her eyebrows now. So as you can see, this has got sort of a rough shade of uh, a shape on her eyebrow, but I'm going to create a more defined look on her eyebrows just to make them look a little bit more fuller. Yeah, and uh, a little bit um, sort of darker so you can... Can, uh, sorry, can you repeat the product again for that? Sure, that I can. So the brand is called Anastasia. Yeah. And the product is called Dip Brow. So D I P B R O W. Dip Brow, okay. Uh -huh. again, is, that, is that online? Or? Uh, no, you should be able to get this. Um, they have a website. Yeah, they, they do have a website, but you can get it in Selfridges, uh, House of Fraser. Uh, larger Dublin stores, uh, John Lewis. So there's a few. There's a few places that will stock this. Anastasia have a website. Is that what you're saying? Sorry. Yeah, Anastasia have a website as well. And yes. to be fair, at the moment they have lots of things. They have a lot. Them. I mean, so, this week would be the week to go out with all your makeup purchases. Yeah. <laughs> another <laughs> another courtesy of <laughs> no another courtesy of the American Black Friday that you guys have seemed to have adapted for the last like what five years so you can't think of anything on your own <laughs> you've been here for six years you're more British than we are I am not I, I am not more British than you <laughs> Right, okay, so I've just sort of created a nice curve on her eyebrow there. So all I'm doing, when you're shading in an eyebrow, you're sort of finding this sort of um, shape um, that, that sort of stands out the most. So with the newts is this sort of shape that way. Um, and then you're sort of drawing in sort of quite rough brush strokes. So if you try and do this as two big block lines and then colour it in, it will look quite, um, quite sort of significantly... Uh, fake. Um, mm -hmm. So what we want to do is try and create some brush strokes with our brush. So when I'm brushing in, I'm just creating very soft sort of uh, strokes that sort of imitate hair to fill in those gaps. So we're just giving it a little bit more of a curve just on that side there. So what are you saying? Does anyone get any plans over the Christmas five day break? Are we having, is anybody having any parties or any, any dinner invitations or? Seems like it's just me then. I was just going to say. <laughs> I'm not doing anything that exciting, but to me it is because I'm going to go and see my mum and dad um, and spend some time with them, which I haven't been able to do properly. So it's been really nice that we've got that little bit of grace for them five days. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. I've just used a little uh, sponge to make sure anywhere I've touched, uh, I've just gone over it to make sure there's no sort of fingerprints on the thing. We're now doing the eyebrows. We're going to move on to eye makeup now. Now, the eyeshadow palette I'm using, for anybody who wants to know what it is, is also by Anastasia. It's uh, the palette called Soft Lamb. Uh, again, available from all the shops I mentioned before. Sorry, how do you spell that? Soft? Soft Glam, so G L. A, uh, oh, soft glam, okay. That's so I'm applying sort of like a mid-brown colour to the outside crevice of her eyes. So I'm just going into the crease here and applying sort of a mid-brown colour and using a soft fluffy brush to create some round motions on the outside there to just give some depth to the eyes. Once I've done that outside corner, I'm then going to move my brush into the crease of the eye and sort of shade 
into that area there. Now it helps to just sort of pull the eye area up so you can really see what you're doing. I know it's more difficult when you're doing your own makeup, but I think um, if you can just sort of help yourselves by sort of pulling up the eye eyebrow there, it opens up the eye area so you can really see what you're working with, especially if you've got smaller eyes like I do. And she's just quite blessed with big eyes, so she's got lots of room um, to do eyeshadow with. But we're just shading into the crease there and the outside corner. So the same on the other side. You can already see how that eye looks so much, so much better than that side already. Just giving her a bit of shape to her eye and it's given a definition to her eye that also makes her eyes look sort of like more almond shaped because they've pulled out on the sides rather than that one that looks rounder. So it doesn't matter what shape your eye is, um, what size your eyes are, the technique for your shading would be the same in the sense that you would shade the outside sort of third of the eye small circular strokes on the outside there really blend it in and then run your brush along the crease there as well so you've got some shading into the crease of the eye there Okay, so that's the dark sort of brown colour on the outside of the eyes to begin with. Um, I'm now going to the same shape as the one that I showed you before. It just helps to make sure that you've got um, a more uh, manoeuvre with your hands, you know, when you sort of blend your colours in. The next one I'm using is just very slightly smaller than the other one. It's just got a smaller head, so it'll shade a smaller area when I'm doing my eyes. I'm then going to pick up black in my palette. So just take a look a little bit of the black there. I know black seems quite scary to use, but if you use it minimally, it'll give you a really nice little depth to your eyes. And we're just shading over what we've done already, very, very close to the lash line and just creating a little bit more depth on the outside corner. Again, we're doing circular motions. So I don't poke you. And just shading on the very outside corner of the eye. Now, because my brush was smaller in size to the other one, it hasn't just shaded over what we've done already. It's given it a little bit more definition there. Do the same on the other side. It's quite difficult to do this on camera because I generally stand in front of, in front of who I'm working on. So I'm sort of working side on. That's the sort of colour on the outside there. So that's the, the depth colour that's added in there. I'm now going to add a touch of concealer to the middle of the eye. So close your eyes for me. If you think about where your eyeball would sort of fall underneath your eyelid, so that sort of middle area there, I'm just shading that out with concealer up until the crease just to clean up that area. So it gives me a nice sort of base to work on to apply the third color that I'm going to apply on there. Close your eyes up. Thank you. Just adding that concealer in there. It doesn't really matter what concealer you use or what shade you use, to be honest. It's just sort of rough out the eyeshadow that you've uh, placed over the eyelid there. So. It's going over the eyeball area, so through the middle, up to the crease. What shade is that? 
So the shade I'm actually using is called Twisted, and it's from NARS, the NARS Creamy Concealer. And this shade is called Custard. But again, you could use any concealer for this. You don't have to use uh, this particular one. Okay. I'm just going to give it a minute for that to dry up. Just so that concealer isn't tacky anymore. sort of gold, shimmery gold colour up there. Um, pull up primer so I can really see the area I'm working with and then drag the colour down over her eyeball area into that inner corner there. So this is the, the area that we'd sort of covered with concealer before. So is that gold shade? Is that it? it is. It's a gold. It's a bronzy gold. I mean, you could use any sort of colour um, over your eyelids, really. So that is sort of. I tend to go with sort of like earthy tones and gold tones because I think they just generally suit our color better. Um, but you could use sort of any colour, really. Um, the shimmery sort of colours in your palette are generally um, saved for this sort of area. So you've got your mid brown first which is what we put in just close your eyes for me you've got your mid brown first that we put in that would be a universal color all around to do that at the beginning of every eye makeup anyway and then you've got your black just to give you a bit of depth along your eye line and then your goals will give you sort of that shimmery party look that you're looking for if you weren't looking of doing a party look and you were just having sort of natural makeup you could use like an earthy skin toned color there so that's the golden A lot of people do shade their eyeshadow under the eyelids, but they completely miss out underneath their eyes, and it's just such a large area that you could really work on, especially if you have quite small eyes. If you're doing the top of your eyes, um, because your eyes are much smaller, there's very little product that will actually sort of stand out. So you've got all six fans underneath your eyes to do. So you could you could do a lot more work underneath your eyes to really make your eyes look bigger and make them stand out. So I'm going to apply a, apply a warm brown just underneath the lash line there and just pat it in, almost, almost stamp it just underneath the lashes there, along the eye there, just to give it a little bit more definition. Yeah. Even on camera you can see how dramatic that looks from one to the other, it just makes the eyes look uh, more defined and gives her a little bit more of a smokier look. So this is a warm brown I'm using. I think most people would say it's like my root. I'm just going to get a large fluffy brush now just to dust away anything that might have fallen underneath your eyes, which is very likely, especially if you're quite new at doing eye makeup, you might get a little bit of eyeshadow that's fallen underneath and then it'll create a shadow. So let's get rid of it. Make sure there's nothing extra on and then the sponge that you've used to apply the foundation with you can just use that to sort of just clean up any areas make sure that there's nothing sort of falling out um, in the wrong place sort of thing and that there's no stamps on your forehead from using your pinky thumbs that's just given me that clean look underneath her eyes again <laughs> Now that that's sort of the eye makeup um, uh, sort of side of things done. Um, what you can do though is you can add glitters and things if you really do want to go all out and you like a sparkly look. Um, it's so easy to change your makeup from just a normal sort of easy sort of going makeup to um, a party makeup by just adding a little bit of glitter. You all like a bit of sparkle, don't you? So I'm just going to be really careful with this. Last time I did this, I spilled it all over the customer. <laughs> This is a uh, matte pigment, so I don't know if it's catching on camera, but it's it's literally just a very sparkly, um, iridescent glitter. Use uh, universally over over eyeshadows. So basically, you can use it first, and then you apply this over the top to uh, to, to sort of glam it up really. So I generally just pop it over the middle of the eye rather than all over because it can look. 
crumb is going to be too much if you're applying all over the eye. So I tend to just go sort of just over the middle area there. Is that on camera? Just popping that all over to give them a really nice shimmery look. Then I'll get the face brush. Make sure there's not any all over the face. I'm going to leave the eye makeup there for a minute. It does need me finishing off because I haven't done any liner and any mascara or eyelashes yet. I'm just going to give that a few minutes to just settle in and sort of give her eyes a bit of a rest as well because once you've been there a little while talking, your eyes it can get a little bit sensitive. So I'm going to leave them for a minute while I finish the rest of her face and then I'll go back to it. I'm now applying a bronzer to the contours of her face. When you fill your foundation, you're generally sort of painting all one shade. Naturally, our skin is lots of different shades. Um, and but by putting foundation on, it can almost look quite sort of um, ghostly sometimes because there's no dimension left in your face. So by applying a bronzer, it just take, uh, adds the, uh, the dimensions back into your face. It starts making it look a little bit more real. A little bit just to underneath the cheekbones along her jawline. It also helps to make your jawline look a little bit slimmer if you're worried about those sorts of things. But I can't say she needs to worry a little bit. A little bit around the forehead, around your forehead line, brush it into the hairline. And then down the side of the nose. So this really helps, even if you've got a dead set straight nose that is perfect, by adding a shade of bronzer down the side of your nose, it just gives you a really nice slim nose profile. If I need. I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't it's say that. You really nose. You're going to have Right. Yeah. yeah. All glammed up, nowhere to go. Going home, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just let's sit and look pretty for your husband then. <laughs> no, <it's laughs> Down the side of the nose again. <coughs> and I just do the tip of the nose as well, just to give it a little bit more of a, a finished look. Oh, can I just ask, you know, if, if it's an elderly person, yes. <laughs> would you use the same sort of makeup or would you? No, so I guess when you when you do makeup, it needs to be relative to the person, uh, regardless of age, it's to do with your sort of skin texture, uh, the shape of your face and your skin type. So for example, if you've got oily skin, you want to be setting your makeup differently to if you've got dry skin, for example, because your skin will dry, a, dry through the day, especially if it's got makeup on, you probably dry a little bit faster than you would if you didn't have makeup on. So a relative of whether you're a young person or an old person, it's about your skin type. So generally mature skin is a little bit drier. Sometimes it has lines in like mine does. So you, you've got to think about what sort of products will sit well on there. So if you have lots of lines in your skin, so for example, if you have crow's feet, just on the outside of your eyes and you have sort of small wrinkles on the outside there, by applying lots and lots of product over it, it won't solve the problem. All it'll do is the product will just go and sit in all the different lines. So make it essentially look worse. So you've just got to be careful about how much product you use and how much product you use. But it's just about making those choices, really. So the wrinkles up, doesn't it, if you put that on? <laughs> yeah, it just goes and sits in the lines. It's like if you, you know, if you have, if you just have, you know, like if you had something crumpled up, it was just going sit in all the all the lines. Yeah. So, so don't not, don't too much. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Don't apply too much and and yeah. wear the product quite sort of thin. So if you are putting foundation on, put your foundation on and then buff it until there's just enough product there to cover the skin area without creasing. Um. So for example, if you've got, which is quite generally. Generally, a, a point for everyone. A lot of people do this because we have fine lines. 
what you do is you just get a brush and brush out anything that forms while you're doing your makeup because that way you're getting rid of any excess product that you, would, you, know, you wouldn't normally need. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I've had makeup done by an artist and obviously still sometimes, you know, on your cheek, well, you, yeah. more gentle, you know, just the lines, they tend to show quite, you know, and I'm just... You mean smile lines here? Yeah. Are you a yeah. smiler? Do you smile a lot? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> so if you do get smile lines here, so basically um, the product's applied and every time your face moves, so your muscles move, um, yeah. it creates a line within here. So it's likely that as the mo um, foundation sort of molds into your face, it goes and sits in that crevice. Makeup's been done. Yeah. Uh, just get a sort of like a face brush yeah. and then brush it out yeah. so that line is, is removed, it's erased and yeah. then sort of keep doing that while you're doing your makeup to make sure that you've got just a, the right amount of product left um, and then sort of powder over it very lightly so then it doesn't move after that. That's the best way to do it um, in okay. that sort of sense. And it'll be the same way if you have crevices underneath your eyes. So you've got small circles under your eyes and, the, you know, it, the product's going to sit in those lines. Then just keep brushing it out until you've got just the right amount of product left to do the job that you need it to do. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, I, I had it done by an artist once and it, it just seemed like it was a bit too thick because obviously it started showing up after. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. It does. And I, I think sometimes it's just about setting it up. Well, and it's quite scary going to an artist for makeup, isn't it? Because you think, oh God, would she do a good job? Yeah. <laughs> I you look like you, well, you live in the house, don't you? So the food, <laughs> yeah, well, you do, and you just got to trust that they know what they do. <laughs> well, you know where I am now, so you're all right. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Cool. Um, is, is training for yourself so people come in to learn just their own makeup so it's all right saying that I'm going to learn by looking at a few videos online or, or, or just sort of picking things up yourself but mm -hmm. when um, I'm sat with you and I'm teaching you for your skin type and your skin you know your face shape and your eye shape then mm -hmm. there's really no sort of margin so you're never going to get things wrong because it's going to be tailored to you so it's almost like a recipe for your skin so that's why a lot of my the courses i do are very popular because it's specifically for you rather than just a generic class but i'm just going to apply a bit of blusher to um anisa's cheekbones now so i'm going to load up my brush with a bit of uh, a peachy cheek when's your next course <laughs> And COVID allows me to have one. Not to be fair, I can train now because I'm officially allowed to be open from today. And uh, education and training was always allowed through lockdown anyway. And, and I fell into that bracket, so I was allowed to train. But I didn't do it because I just felt like it wasn't necessary for people to put themselves in that sort of um, uh, restricted danger. So I just felt like it'd be safer not to work for four weeks um, for myself and for my clients. So I haven't worked until today's my first, first day of... Uh, opening the studio back up again so I'm quite, quite uh, feeling my element. <laughs> yeah, oh that's good. <laughs> I do love what I do. I gave up what I did full time yeah. to do Seems this. Like, yeah. yeah, I do. Yeah. I really do because I gave up what I did. I to... Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and I, like to, I like to make people feel good about themselves and I don't just do that by making you look pretty. I, I feel as if that my job is to make you feel pretty too. So um, I always sort of... Uh, I always involuntary, whether my client wants it or not, I give them lots of advice and, yeah. and lots of motivation and lots of life things. And I listen. And I think a lot, sometimes the ladies that come to me just want me to listen to them. And <laughs> make them feel better for that reason. Basically, yes. Yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm literally counsel as well as <laughs> And I love doing that because I feel like if I leave one good imprint on somebody when they leave my room, if I made them feel good about themselves, then that's my job done, you know? Like, it's not just that I painted their face. I feel as if it's important yeah. to make them feel good. Too, so. yeah, we good all thing. have things, you oh, know? Great. We all have things in our life that hurt or, or, yeah. or cause us, you know, heart, heartache or stress. And I think um, it's nice when somebody makes you feel that little bit better. Listens about and, yeah, understands. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sometimes it's just about nodding and listening yes. and just, just, just hearing that person's views and opinions and whatever yeah. they've been going through. So. Yeah, it's a bit offloading, isn't it? Sometimes. Yeah, of course it is. 
Oh, how are? Yeah. Um, with blushes, what's the, you, get, you get lots of different shades out there, but like yeah. for Asian skin tone, which would you say is the best kind um, of shade to use? With with any skin tone, so regardless of whether you're yellow skin tone, which is generally what Asian girls are, or if you're pink skin toned, or if you're if you're darker skin toned, um, the colour that you pick should be something that complements you. So um, generally, if you're yellow skin toned and you like sort of a medium, a medium sort of um, shade, I usually say go for a peachy pinky colour because it always makes you feel more, it makes you look more awake and a little bit more youthful and it sort of adds um, a little bit of uh, energy to your face. So rather than going for the duller pinks or the mauves or the maroons, um, the, the sort of peachy pinks always make you look more fresh. And they make you look younger and i think everybody wants to look younger so um one of the, my favorite colors and I'll, I'll just i'll just quote this for you because um you can pop it down so if you're ever out shopping or something it can be uh, a color that you pick up so this is by mac and it's called melba m-e-l-b-a and you can buy it in a single palette this is a pro palette so i've got all of them together but that that color is a really nice fresh peach that gives you a nice nice youthful, youthful look and that's what I used on Lisa just now. Face and gives you um, yeah, gives you sort of more of a radiant, glowy finish as a highlighter that's applied on top of your blusher. I'm just going to show you where the hell that's done. So this is the Huda Beauty Golden Sands Highlighter Kit. It comes in a range of four colours. Sorry, what's that colour? Sorry. It's a, it's a highlighter palette, so it's by Huda Beauty. Yeah, oh, highlighter palette. Yeah, you did. Highlighter palette. And the colour is Golden Sands. And we apply this just at the top of the cheekbone. So where your blush sort of ends, just at the top there. It's only a very small amount, but it gives you a really nice sort of sheen to your skin. Of the cheekbones there, a little bit on the eyebrow there as well, just to make it. applying a little bit down the nose. So, this is always a really good trick for making you look beautiful again and to make your face look really alive, it's almost like you're adding the 3D back into your face after you've put your foundation on. Um, but we're applying a little bit down the length of the nose and a tiny bit at the end as well just to give it that shine. Sorry, I missed that. What was the, hi what was the highlight that you're using? So it's Huda Beauty. That's okay. the name of the brand. It's the Huda Beauty one. Right. And the, um, the color is Golden Sands. Okay. And it comes in a palette of four colors like that. So my palette's always oh, Huda Beauty. Okay. But it's because yeah. I use them so much. Um, and, and you can use any of those. Things. They're all quite complimentary of, of, of all skin tones, really. But all it does, it adds light to, light to your face where you need it the most. So it adds a highlight to the top of your cheekbones there, um, just to kind of make your face pop a bit more. And it lifts your cheekbones, gives you that nice angled face. Um, um, can, you, can you show the face from a different angle as... Um, it looks like that is too much glow on her face, so we might be like missing out the, you know, real colours on her face. Could you do that, please? So. Um, if you take turn your face to the side a little, and then no, it's not really. That that doesn't help, does it? <laughs> no. It's too hard to pick up colours on these. Oh, no. Is that any better? 
uh, looks the same. It's quite glowy, you know. Um, yeah. Maybe so, if I move further back. Further back or further forward? Try further forward. I think it looks too much light, isn't it? Right, so you go further back. Try further back. Yeah. Is it better if she's further back? Can you see colour better? I think no. the I think it's much clearer when it's closer. Closer. When yeah. it's closer. Okay. Okay. How about there? Is that yeah. better? Yeah. Definitely better. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay, no, that's fine. I'm glad you said. Now, um, colors that people like and colors people hate. Um, so I'm just going to go with something that's quite a neutral sort of color, uh, quite a neutral sort of color that can go all over her lips, okay. rather than it being the statement. It'll just be a color that nicely blends with the rest of her makeup. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll go back to finishing the eyes off after that. I do realize we're a bit over, so. Um, I'll try and go as fast as I can. I'm just lining her lips now with a lip liner first. That helps the, the lipstick stay in place. So a lot of people do skip this step, but it, it helps lipstick stay in place. And it also helps you sort of create a very defined line around your lips. So it gives you more focus around them. You can also make them look bigger at the same time if you want by overlining slightly like I am doing. It just helps with them. Um, the symmetry of the lips. I never realised you had small lips mm -hmm. now. Oh, that talks a lot. I know. Can you imagine? Surprise, <laughs> it's a bit. She's done her best behaviour today. She's been warned. She's normally very loud, like Anissa. Mm -hmm. It really is the quietest I've ever been. It really is. Wow. It's the quietest I've ever seen anyway. Yeah. It's better than session, you see. Uh, please. <laughs> I'm the light of your life. Yeah, you're so right. So, um, I'm using a colour called this. This is my colour. I, I have an Anastasia thing going on today, but this is Anastasia. It's a lip stain in the colour Alison. And the good thing about this one is it stays on really, really well. So, you put it on in the morning and you will not have to look at it until the evening. It's going to stay on. And stay on all the time. If anything, it will dry your lips a little bit, so maybe just the Vaseline and lip balm might be needed for today, but it does give that long wear. So if you're one of these people that eats your lipstick or um, you end up using it within the hour of putting it on, these sorts of lipsticks are really good because they're done really, really well. They withstand eating, kissing, all those sorts of things, so it's, it makes it a lot easier. Not that we do a lot of kissing at the moment. Mm -hmm. I can't really hug you, you don't kissing I know. <laughs> Open your mouth for me. Just going to pop that on. It's almost like a paint, so it sets really well. It does set matte, so it gives you a really nice matte look. And this colour is a really, really um, universal colour that suits a lot of people, so I do use it quite a lot. It's a colour I use very, very often. We tend to have like three or four tubes of this one in. What colour is that in her? It's called Alison. 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 Yeah. I was just thinking that. I, I know. No, I don't have it. I know. I have the other one, the MAC one that we always use, but I don't have this one. But I'm gonna order it right now for kick Christmas. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do some top line on the bottom just to give you a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a wind on the bottom. So again, I'm using a pink top. Similar to what we used for the eyebrows before, but this is a black one. And I'm using a very small angled brush. And that is, there we go. Um, just a very, very slim brush just to let me. Get close to the eyes there. I'm going to pick the eyebrow up and then shade as close to close both eyes. Thank you. Uh, close to the eyelash as possible. Now, appreciate when you're doing this yourself, it is quite difficult because you you sort of need to be able to see what you're doing, and then you've got your hand over your eye and things like that. So 
I'm going to come very close to the camera in a minute and show you how I do it uh, on myself without, um, without too much trouble because I can't do one eye open and one eye closed. It really doesn't work for me. I get it all over the place. So that's, I'll show you a trick on how to do that. So I've just created a line just above the eyes and these out a tiny bit as well, just to click on it. Um, Sorry, what product is it that you're using there? So I am using its MAC Fluid Line. It's called MAC Fluid Line and the colour is Black Track. Okay. Now this is hard because I'm not... This is my wrong hand. Mm -hmm. I still can't do this. <laughs> Can you believe I still can't do this? Okay, I'm just going to quickly show you that you could be just get back for a minute. Okay. Social distance, please. Thank you. Okay, so the easiest way to do that is to sort of tilt your face up like so. No, I'm good. Tilt your face up like so and then look down. And then it gives you the whole visible eyelid. So when you're trying to do your eye makeup or you're trying to do um, your top liner or your mascara, the easiest way to do it is to put your head up and then you've got all that space to work on and you can actually see it so you don't have to close your eyes to do it. Sorry for that very um, <laughs> intrusive uh, um, comment, but I just felt like I had to show you how to do it themselves. Because so it's so much easier to stood over the person. I'm going to apply a little bit of mascara to the muscle. I'm just going to apply some of those products. And then you just going to put that on money on. You'd rather buy something that you can change every few months because it does expire. So I would probably say six weeks is probably the longest you should use the mascara for without it um, sort of causing damage to your, to your lashes because uh, it so does. So that's what's been happening to my lashes. That's why you have no lashes. Yeah. How long have you had your mascara? Don't say more than three weeks. Three months? <laughs> Where am I going in COVID? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I'm just going to paint the lashes now if you look down for me. Just give that a nice bit cold. There are some products that I'd probably say you should spend that little bit more on because it, the quality of the product will matter um, and it will make a difference to the finish of your makeup. So things like your foundation, for example, it lasts absolutely ages. So rather than getting a drugstore brand which costs you maybe £10 a bottle, um, you'd probably, I'd be more inclined to say get, spend that little bit more and get a better quality one that will last you longer. Um, and there's some things like your mascaras, like, like your eye pencils, your lip pencils, your lipsticks, you could probably afford to get something a little bit more lower end because they don't, they sort of don't need to do much of a, much of a job if that makes sense. So I'd probably say go for a bit of a balance when you're, when you're picking your makeup items. So I'm just coating the lashes with a mascara. And then to do underneath, the easiest way to do it is just to zigzag underneath the eye. So if you can look up for me, just to zigzag your brush, it really coats all the little, little hairs underneath the eye. And, um, your eyes are mm -hmm. going to give you that definition. Now, I haven't added any quartz lashes to her eyes. Um, actually, so I'm not going to do that today. So that's the majority of the makeup done. Now, the only thing I've got left is to set the makeup. And it's really important to set because. Right there. Right there, Mario Badescu. Oh, yes, sorry. Yeah. So the two products I need at the end to set the makeup is a little bit of powder and then a setting spray. So if you've done your makeup, it looks immaculate as it is right now. Uh, within the hour or so, it's going to start melting a little bit. Uh, you might be caught in the rain or uh, you might have gone to an event where there's lots of bright lights and lots of heat and you sweat and then your makeup starts sort of running. So it's very important to set it at the end. A lot of people skip that step because if you all get this done, it looks great. We'll run with this, um, but it's really important to sort of make sure it stays on, um, you know, the way it is as well. So 
best way to do that is to sort of set the makeup with a setting powder. Now this one's by a company called Laura Mercier. And the colour is called Translucent. And from all the all the setting powders I've ever used, this has to be the best one. There's really no other no other one that will cut it. So I'm just adding a little bit to all the areas of her face. Now, if you've got quite sort of shiny skin, or if you tend to get quite oily through the day, and you need to put on your face that shiny, then do add a fair bit of this, um, just to sort of make sure that you've got a nice matte base to begin with. Is that called translucent setting powder? Yeah. It is, yes. I've just added a little bit underneath the cheekbones, underneath the eyes, the middle of the forehead, down the nose, above the lip, that's the one where we get quite sweaty, and then on the chin as well. So that's just to set the makeup so that it stays on better through the day. And then once you've done that, I will use a setting spray. This one's by Mario Badescu. And all this does is add a little bit of hydration back into the face and then helps to keep your makeup on longer. So you know the translucent powder yes uh, i do know that a lot of people leave it on to bake their face with is that something you would recommend that's right so i'd only bake if you have shiny skin so if you're the sort of person that you put your makeup on and within the hour you start glowing like a beacon or if you're like really really shiny through the day and you've got very oily skin then you should bake your foundation, your, your, your powder. Otherwise, you just do a light brush all over. A lot of people have dry skin and then they're baking because it's just something that has become sort of quite popular to do. And all you end up with extra lines and extra creases in your face and a very overly powdered finish, which isn't generally um, a nice look to have. So the only, only, only people that should bake are people that have very oily skin. Otherwise, it just won't look, um, you know, like, like you have seen on all the adverts and things, it doesn't look the same. Okay. Thank you. Thank no worries. You. So that's that's the full makeup done. I hope you pick lots of tips and tricks up for um, you know, any any events or anything that you've you've got planned. Um, you don't have to do the whole look. I mean, I appreciate it's taken me an hour and a bit to do it. Um, so a lot of people won't have that sort of time. Um, and 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 patience to be fair. But even if you picked up a few little things, maybe just the highlighter tip or the concealing underneath and things like that, it will change the way you do your makeup. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, if anybody's got any questions, I'm happy to answer them before we finish up, if that's alright. That was really good, how are uh, Oh, was thank good. you. Hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, Hama. It was really thank good. You. Both thank of you. you. Thank you. Thank you. It was all nice right. meeting you all. <laughs> Love your accent. Thank oh, you. It's really annoying. Why? <laughs> it's so American. <laughs> yes. I know. That's I love it. My thing. daughter, she's what nine years old, and her accent is just everything's American. Really? Yeah, is because she because watches, she watches all these videos on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's surprising right. because um, my sister-in-law is a primary school teacher, and she said the amount of children coming into reception class with an American accent <laughs> has risen over the last four years because they're learning their English from, from the internet, which is, yeah, yeah. to be fair, as a parent, I'd be really embarrassed if that was happening to my children. But I can understand where it comes from because it's such a trend, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and, and the girls, you know, the kids are so influenced, influenced by all this media stuff. I can see where it comes from. <laughs> Are there any questions? Anyone got any questions? Anyone got any questions before I go? I think we're having a session next week, isn't it? Yeah, it's hijab. A staff training class next week, so that will be that will be a fun one to do, and I think a lot of ladies do enjoy that one because we do get a lot from it. But yeah, do we have any feedback, ladies? Do we have any feedback? Any feedback, anyone? Oh, he's really good. Thank you. You can post it on the group if, if you want to, the feedback as well. Well, so we can put it on our social media just to, you can't really see anybody's face, so I'll keep you all off it. But it's just so we can put it on our social media as well. I do have an Instagram page, um, Foundations by Hawaii. If anybody's an Instagram fan, 
just because I put lots of tips and tricks on all the time. So if there's anybody wants to sort of uh, learn mm. any scarf styles or any makeup tips, I always put things on. And sometimes I just like a little nosy about what I'm doing and, you know, what rides I've done and what sort of looks people are doing and things like that. So if you do want to have a little nosy, do have a look. Mm -hmm. No. How are you just only on um, Instagram, not anywhere else? Um, I think I'm... Um, no, I think just Instagram. Yeah, just Instagram. I think when, when, I, when you're on lots of social media, there's so mm -hmm. much to keep up with that it sort of takes over my life. And I do have three children and I do everything else everybody else does. So I feel as if, if I'm on too many platforms and I have a lot to keep up with. Mm -hmm. So I'm stuck with Instagram for now. Um, but I, obviously I have a base here and I have a phone number and anybody can ring me at any point if anybody wants anything from me. So yeah, quite approachable really. <laughs> no problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next bye. time. Bye. Have a good night. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. 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 bye.